today we go for the what the topic called as the rectus sheath rectus sheath is the one the one which will be covering the rectus abdominis muscle which is one of the anterolateral abdominal wall muscle now this rectus sheath is formed by an aponeurosis of internal oblicus abdominis by its two flap one is an anterior flap or anterior layer of aponeurosis of the internal oblicus abdominis and another is the posterior flap or the layer of aponeurosis of the internal oblicus abdominis now this rectus sheath it is uh, anteriorly it is completely formed that is from above down right from jepard process to the pubic symphysis but why the posterior wall or the posterior flap or rather the posterior layer of the aponeurosis of the internal oblicus abdominis which is forming the rectus sheath it is incomplete means at the upper part and at the pubic symphysis or just between the what umbilicus and the pubic symphysis it is deficient partially what mind now here this rectus abdominis extension from above down jepard process to the what that of the where you can see pubic symphysis and laterally linea semilunaris of one to the what the linea alba so now this rectus sheath is a so named because it is covering the rectus abdominis muscle and posteriorly it is deficient at the upper part at the level of the jepard process and the what the that of the urethra can say at the level just above the pubic symphysis it is also deficient this rectus abdominis uh, rectus sheath which is there it will be dividing for the purpose of explanation into a four divisions one is at the level of the jepard process second will be there between the jepard process and the umbilicus third will be there just below the umbilicus of about the rather you can say it to 1 mm to 1.25 mm or rather little bit less or sometimes in some individual it will be there just 1.25 to 1.35 mm then fourth will be there that will be there between the water that of the where you can say umbilicus and the pubic symphysis so now we will go to the water this you can say rectus sheath at the level of the jepard process what are the relations and how it is related to all the structures which will be there in the midway so rectus sheath at the level of the jepard process in front it is totally it is related to skin superficial fascia superficial fascia is nothing but the the fascia of the pectoral region called as the pectoral fascia then the lower fibers of the water that of the pectoralis major that is the abdominal fibers which are taking origin from the external oblicus abdominis and the lower digitation so the lower fibers of the serratus anterior and in front yet it is related to the water jepoidal fibers all the sternal fibers as because jepard process forms the water that of the sternum of the diaphragm then you have got the what aponeurosis of the what external oblicus abdominis which is mentioned here with the water that of the purple in color that is at the level of the linea semilunaris it will be there the ending of the muscle called as the external oblicus abdominis then behind the you can say rectus sheath as we you know already in the introductory part at the level of the jepard process 
the posterior flap of the aponeurosis of the internal obliquus abdominis is not formed as because it is a deficient it is uncovered that rectus abdominis so you will be having a aponeurosis of the what is that of the transverse abdominis then posteriorly you will be having to that of the rectus sheath is a transversal fascia which is marked here with the orange color it is the fascia or the facial lining of the entire abdominal cavity this will be running as up diaphragmatic fascia as it runs behind and medially it will be going to form the pre vertebral fascia and the vertebral fascia but at the level of the what kidney it forms the renal fascia pre renal fascia and then the pre vertebral and the vertebral fascia same thing will be going to carry down with the what other side then as it will be running you can say laterally it will be going to cover the what that of the you can say transverse abdominis muscle then as it runs you can say laterally and forwards and towards medially it will be going to it will be going to become as a what a transverse is fascia but as it descends you can say downwards and towards a laterally it, it will be going to try to meet the transversal fascia which will be going to come from front and then down and towards laterally at the level of the water that of the inguinal ligament and it leaves the entire abdominal cavity and goes into the water or runs into the water lower limb becoming as a femoral sheath so for femoral sheath we will tell that it is the fascial lining of the abdominal cavity so which has been read at the level of the what femoral sheath in the lower limb in connection with the femoral triangle content so this is what the fem transversal fascia then posteriorly the rectus sheath is for the related at the level of the zipper process the yellow dot which is said to be as a extra peritoneal fat this extra peritoneal fat acts as a what that of the you can say heat absorbent because of the water many mechanisms or many physiological actions of that of all the organs which are present in the abdominal cavity so this will be deposited at some point more and some point it is less but it will be there but at the level of the what kidney it is called as a pre renal fat and the pre renal fat then we will be having posteriorly the rectus sheath at the level of the zipper process it is related to the what uh, two lining i had mentioned here one will set to be as a what is even you can say peritoneum which is there with the red line that is called as a parietal and another one will be there as a what visceral parietal will be going to cover the entire you can say abdominal cavity boundary of the abdominal cavity not only up behind front down and behind and laterally this is parietal visceral is the one of the one which will be covering not only the what hand in hand with the what parietal but also it covers the what all the organs living behind some organs those are called as the retroperitoneal organs which are not covered by this visceral as well as the parietal so these are the things that what it will be there rectus sheath at the level of the what the zipper process anteriorly what posteriorly what but here you have to remember rectus sheath in front it is complete but behind it is not covering the what that of the you can say rectus abdominis now coming to the what the second step or second level of the rectus sheath at the level between the what the zipper process and the umbilicus here it is uh, nothing so difficult because you will be getting here two things of the what that of the where you can say aponeurosis of the what that of the internal obliquus abdominis which will be dividing into a two one is anterior and another is a posterior flap which will be there safely that the rectus abdominis 
comes. So thereby it is called as a water reactor sheath where you will be getting clear idea. Now anteriorly it is related to the water skin, huh? superficial fascia of the water, that of the abdomen. For your kind information, there will be a new fascia for abdomen. Then you have got the water upon the process of the water, that of the external obliquus abdominis muscle. This will be upon the process starts at the level of the water, that of the linea semilunaris. It is the water, that of the maximum convexity of the water, ninth rib to the water, that of the midpoint of the water, inguinal ligament, which will be there, white, half moon shaped. You can say many circular things that to arc like, hence it is called as now at this level all anterolateral abdominal wall muscles form of their own ponderosis. So this will be there. Now behind what you will be having, behind it will be having what is said to be as a rectus sheath, the aponeurosis of the water that of the internal oblicus abdominis, which will be starting from the what linea semilunaris, but earlier to that it will be the what anterior edge of that of the you can say internal oblicus abdominis muscle, which is said to be as a water second anterolateral abdominal wall muscle or the anterior abdominal wall muscles. This will be. This is the water posterior, transversalis, aponeurosis of the transverse abdominis. Then you will be having internal to that. So at this level, posteriorly, you will be having the orange colored. Now this orange colored is nothing but the word transversalis fasciae. This transversalis fasciae, a detailed thing I have told in the water earlier part at the level of the water, chippered process. Then you will be having the water behind. At this level, the rectus sheet is related to the water dotted yellow line, which is said to be as the extra peritoneal fat. And then you have got the peritoneum. Now this peritoneum is a covering of the water that of the entire, all the pelvic abdominal organs. You have got the two. One is a water red in color and another is a white. Red goes in favor of or it is referred to as parietal and white is said to be as a what visceral which will be covering the what all the visceras and also partially it will be going to cover entirely the what body cavity. Now the rectus sheath at the level just below the umbilicus half about you can take it 1 mm or rather 1.2 mm or rather you can say 1.25 mm or rather it is a little bit more in some individual but statistically 1.25 mm or rather you can say it uh, something one finger breadth or two finger breadth. Now there what are the things? Now here the same thing it will be there which will be there between the water jippered process and the umbilicus. In front it is related to the water that of the skin then the superficial fascia, superficial fascia, but one important thing that you have to mark it here, the superficial fascia of the water abdomen at the level of the umbilicus or just below the umbilicus, it will be going to divide into what two flaps, one is said to be as a superficial flap or the fatty layer of the water that is the superficial fascia of the abdomen which goes in favor of fascia tempura, this, then you will be having a membranous layer of the water that of the you can say superficial fascia of the abdomen which goes in favor of deep layer of the water superficial fascia of the abdomen. Then you will be having in front the rectus sheath at the level just below the umbilicus, upon the roses of the water that of the external oblicus abdomen is, but as it runs behind and laterally at the level of the linea semilunaris, it will be once again forms the anterior edge of the water that of the external oblicus abdominis. Now behind what you will be having, behind at this level, you will be having what is said to be as aponeurosis of uh, transverse abdominis. This aponeurosis of the transverse abdominis starts forming its aponeurosis at the level of 
linear similar narrates as it has been there for the other two levels that is one at the level of the water that of the jeopard process another will be there between the water the jeopard process and the other process now there only it forms the anterior edge of the water that of the transverse abdominis now this transverse abdominis will be having the water now internal to that next there will be a orange colored thing which is said to be as behind rectus sheath at this level it is related to the transversal fascia transversal fascia detail part it has been told at the water those two preceded two levels then you will be having still behind to that the rectus sheath just below the water umbilicus it is related to the water yellow dotted line called as a water extra peritoneal fat and then you will be having as usually right from jeopard process just below the water umbilicus and the water jeopard process peritoneum will be there peritoneum has got the two layers one is a what parietal and another is a visceral parietal is said to be now here it is referred to as in this diagram for your understanding purpose it is a pink but in the cadaver at the level of the dissection it will be not there pink only for schematic diagram then you will be having what is the next called as a visceral now what is the funny part here from this diagram to this diagram here you have got the superficial fascia no two divisions here you have got the in front superficial fascia has got the two divisions that is what the main important things lies now you have to go to the right rectus sheath at the level of that of the between the what umbilicus and the what pubic symphysis in front it is related to the what that of the skin superficial fascia of the water that of the abdomen and it's a two flap one is said to be as a fatty layer of superficial fascia of the abdomen that is also called as a what superficial layer of the superficial fascia of the abdomen rather it is also called as fascia scamphora then another layer which will be goes in favor of here now this is called as a what is a membranous layer of the superficial fascia of the abdomen or a deep layer of the superficial fascia of the abdomen or rather it goes in favor of fascia scarpa now this fascia scarpa as it runs downwards or towards the lateral after running little in front and then down it will be going to become as a deep fascia of the thigh which is called as the fascia lata which will be going to form the floor of the femoral triangle rather you can say that femoral triangle as a fascia scarpa because of this fact then in front at this level the rectus sheath in front related to the water that of the aponeurosis of the water external oblique abdominis this aponeurosis forms at the level of the water linea similar areas like at the water different levels what you have got anterior edge of this external oblique abdominis will forms or gives away for the formation of up its own aponeurosis behind behind the rectus sheath at this level it will be same as that of the at the level of the jeopard process it will be deficient so you will be having a aponeurosis of the water that of the transverse abdominis aponeurosis of the transverse abdominis forms at the level of the linea cellular aris where the anterior edge of the transverse abdominis muscle ends then you have got the water this you can say aponeurosis of the water that of the transverse abdominis after running a little distance down it will be little distance of 0.02 mm it will be going to fuse with aponeurosis of the water that of uh, internal oblique abdominis which will be coming from the earlier level and then it gives the way for formation of one 
वाटर शेड लाइन फ्रॉम द लीनिया सेमिलोनारिस टू द वाटर लीनिया अल्बा एंड इवन फ्रॉम द अदर साइड इट कम्स दैट फ्यूजन फ्रॉम द लीनिया सेमिलोनारिस टू द वाटर लीनिया अल्बा आफ्टर फ्यूजिंग दिस ट्रांसोसेलेस फेशी मींस aponeurosis of the transverse abdominis to that of uh, the aponeurosis of the aorta internal oblique abdominis which is deficient covering the rectus abdominis which is goes in favor of arcuate life arcuate this arcuate line is a water shed line then you will be having what is said to be as a water transverse as fascia This transversal fascia detail will be there for all the you can say three levels we have heard about. Then the extra peritoneal fat which is a yellow dot line. Then you have got at this level the rectus sheath related to once again the peritoneum. Now that peritoneum you will be having the red line and white line. Now this red line is the what what is said to be as a parietal, whereas white will be the what visceral. So these are the things. Now, where you have to remember here, what is the important thing from the water third level to the water fourth, that is just below the water umbilicus to the between the umbilicus and the jugular process. What important you have to remember is anteriorly the same thing it will be there, no change from the earlier level, but behind you have got the change. Now that behind what the change? Behind at this level the rectus sheath is deficient in its forming. So aponeurosis of the water transverse abdominis will be going to fuse with the water aponeurosis of the internal oblicus abdominis which is coming from the preceded level, just below the umbilicus, giving rise to the formation of one line. That line is starting from linea semilunaris to linea alba. That is the interlocking of all the aponeurosis. And from the other side, that you can say linea semilunaris. After having kept fused with this transverse aponeurosis to the posterior layer of the aponeurosis of the internal oblique abdominis, it also runs and fuses to the what? Linea. Alpha giving rise to one line. That line is called as a arcuate line. This line is also said to be as a watershed line. So that is important. Then further all rest, transversal fascia, extra peritoneal fat, and the what peritoneum, it will be there continuing. So this is what you will be getting. These are the four important levels. One must. After knowing these things, what you have understood, the rectus sheath is so named because it is covering the rectus abdominis by the two flaps. One is a what anterior flap, and another is a posterior flap. But this anterior flap, it will be there right from above. Up. Up till the pubic symphysis from jipoid, but the posterior flap, you know, at the level of the jipoid and at the level of the, this thing. I mean to say, between the umbilicus and the what pubic symphysis, it is deficient. But at the level of the pubic, between the umbilicus and pubic symphysis, aponeurosis of the transverse abdominis will be going to fuse with the aponeurosis of the posterior layer of. Upon the process of the internal oblicus to give rise to the arcuate line. So this is the thing. What you have to remember. Now what is the? What are the contents of this rectus sheath? Rectus sheath content. Rectus abdominis. So it is a name for that. Then the pyramidalis. Pyramidalis is a small triangular muscle which will be there in the rectus sheath in front. Of the rectus abdominis, small portion it will be going to come and occupy in the rectus sheath. Then you will be having the water vessels. Now those vessels are the inferior epigastric 
results which will be running from below up to join or to anastomose to that of the vessels which are coming from top those are called as the superior epigastric vessels vessels in the sense arteries are also there that is the arterial anastomosis then you have got the venous veins are also there they will be also get anastomosis that is called as the venous anastomosis or rather what we say as collateral circulation between the inferior epigastric and the superior epigastric inferior epigastric is the things like that what you will be have so this is important when you will be going to the surgery okay this is the contact inferior itself is about it is an interlocking of all the conjunctives which are the fibers no bleeding but if you take a incision on the either side of this linear bar either any levels here here there will be a bleed, little bleeding comparatively but even though again the less bleeding then if you take a incision somewhere else ahead than the what linear semilunar is at the anterolateral part where that aponeurosis earlier to the what of formation of the what aponeurosis there will be the bleeding because muscles are there muscles will be the what having a blood supply venous drainage lymphatic drainage so bleeding will be the more depends upon that you can set your line of treatment for after operation any antibiotics and all you can give it higher antibiotic where if it has been taken on the linear one and the paramedian higher if it will be there at the this thing at the level so you can use the lower healing will be the fix it will be applies for all levels now after having heard about this what do you think about where the bleeding will be there there will be a healing first where there will be a no bleeding there will be a what delayed healing so if you take a ratio between the healing and the between the healing and the blood supply if there will be a delayed healing blood supply will be less faster healing blood supply will be more so if bleeds more heals fast bleeds less heals later so bleeding is a directly proportional to the what healing of a wound 
healing of any surgical wounds. But the treatment, bleeding is indirectly proportional to the water use of the antibiotics. So this is what you have to adapt after hearing this. This is a water mark. Second, if you take an incision here, now these are all the layers are there. So this is what today's topic. Thank you one and all.